Let's rock! Hello everyone, here we are at the Australian Computer Museum in Sydney and I'm going to be showing the Yulifac. Uh, it's an oddly named device, I think it's uh, short for something like Ultimate Interface and this is a device for the Amstrad CPC computer. Um, back when that computer was new there was something called the Multiface which plugged into the expansion port and that would give you a lot of things like uh, debug options and would also let you load uh, ROMs and things like that. Uh, so I guess this is kind of the modern equivalent. Probably the most interesting thing is we've got a USB plug on it. So you can stick all of your disk images onto a USB key, plug it in, now you've got a flash drive. Um, now this normally comes as just a bare circuit board. There's a guy I believe in Greece who makes these, uh, pretty much just handmade. I was lucky enough to find on Thingiverse a 3D print file for a case. So I've made that and then just painted it uh, using the closest gray I could find to the CPC. I uh, particularly like that he's made separate little buttons which go over the tack switches on the board. So I've painted those separately as well. Just done a little bit of uh, brushwork on the lines and the letters there. Okay, let's have a look at how this works. All right, we have here my Amstrad CPC 6128. And I believe the Yulifac is compatible with the 6128 as well as the 464 and the 664. <coughs> now, there is a little slider in there which can turn it, you can't really see it, can turn it from 6128 mode to 664 mode, 464 mode, sorry. And perhaps surprisingly, um, I've got mine turned on to 464 mode because I'm having trouble with the RAM in this computer. So by doing this, I can use the RAM expansion on the Yulifac to replace the top RAM on my computer, which is having some issues. All right, so we'll turn it on. And you can see when it starts up there, so we can see USB device connected, it says Yulifac Enhance 3. 512k of RAM. Okay, so what can we do with this device? Well, we can, for example, run a diagnostic. Um, this is Amstrad di Diagnostic ROM, which I think is fairly common. So when it starts up, it does a lower RAM test. That was the little red thing there. We do an upper RAM test, uh, I think because it's going to be using the RAM on the board, it will be okay. If we've got it in 6128 mode, then my computer fails, which indicates that my RAM chips are probably no good. Now, one nice thing that you get on this board is a reset button, which you don't have normally on the CPC. So if we press R for reset, and we've gone back to this. Right, what else can we do? Well, we can go to File Manager. <coughs> and now we've got the standard DOS style file tree here. So we can say games. And there we go, all of the DSK files that you would be running on your emulator, you can put onto USB stick and then run it here. So that's quite nice. So we can go, I think it's a striker in the crypts of Trogan, yep. Probably mode one for color graphics. So this is emulating a floppy disk so you can see that the Disk activity light will flash when you're loading. Oh, look at this guy. A week's up the rest.
Yeah, so you can uh, really load up probably every, every game that was ever made for the CPC onto a single USB stick now. So that's very useful. And again, we just go back there. Um, now we've got some other things here. We do have a little D button here. D, which uh, lets you switch disks, I believe. So if you load two different images, you can put them as disk one and disk two and swap. Uh, we've got something here. Here we go. So by pressing that, you can see 512K RAM or 32 ROMs. So you can actually fill up that RAM with ROM images and then they will load up here. Um, I don't really have any. ROMs that I used, but back in the day people used to, things like word processors and stuff, productivity software, you could get it on a ROM cartridge, I guess to save your disk drive, then you'd only use your disk drive to save your data. Uh, now there is a power switch, which I don't think that is, yeah, oh, I think it's pause, sorry, yeah, because when I press that, the whole thing is paused. So that makes more sense, I thought it was power. It didn't power the computer off. Okay, let's type in help and see some of the various commands. So there's actually quite a lot of things that we'll do. So for example, we've got um, some different ROM options like PowerDOS here. Got various file managers. Uh, you can also disable the USB drive, so then you'll get back onto your normal floppy drive. You can load ROMs. Now, it also has a serial port on it, although it's not a regular nine pin uh, PC port, it's just headers, which then you have to make your own adapter. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, I think it's possible even to put uh, some kind of wireless thing, maybe a Bluetooth adapter into that. You have a lot of other stuff. Now, uh, one nice thing is that you can, for example, image uh, a disk file onto a floppy disk. Um, I've used this recently because we have a PCW, Amstro PCW here, and although the computer itself is not compatible with the CPC, it does use the same floppy disks and the same drive. And so what you can do is you can download the PCW operating system put it onto a floppy drive with this computer, and then put the disk into the PCW and boot it. And so that has been quite useful, and then you can also do the opposite. You can rip a disk to a DSK image, which I've done where we've uh, had, I think it's actually this disk, which is unlabeled, but turned out to have on it a whole bunch of stuff from an Amstrad user group from Queensland in 1985. And so it's got their whole journal, a bunch of uh, little games that they've made. And I think it's great that you know, these were things that were pretty much lost to history and we were able to get an archive of that. So you can do a lot of stuff. And yeah, there is in fact uh, a Wi-Fi module that you can put on it and it's got Wi-Fi commands. So you can um, set this up as some kind of file server and then you can just be you know, copying programs across from your PC without having to use any cables or anything, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there's things like there's a terminal, so you can get this into serial mode, and I guess you know you could potentially use it to control other things. You could run an Arduino off it or something, which would be kind of cool. And you even get a few nice little things like uh, Pac-Man. So if we go. And there we go. Okay, it looks like I need the joystick for this one. But I can just reset like that. There are a couple of different game options, I think. There was Pac-Man and Galaxian type one as well. Yeah, and a gorilla game, Killer Gorilla. That's what it is. I think it's like um, King, uh, Donkey Kong, I guess. Oh, 
Oh, how can you try? Yep, that's Donkey Kong. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I actually really hate Donkey Kong. I've never found a very interesting but There you go. That is kind of nice. I'm just going to drop straight on my head. But it's kind of nice though that they uh, have some preloaded stuff on there. Yeah, so this is the, the Yuli pack. Um, it's not terribly expensive, I think, for what it is. Um, as I said, I'm pretty sure that just one guy hand makes these, so uh, might be a bit hard to get hold of one. But if you can, if you have a CPC, I think it's probably about the, the best sort of add-on really that you would, would want. Um, the only thing I suppose is that it's not going to let you say interface an external floppy disk onto a 464, which I think there are some other devices that do that, but yeah, if you've already got say 6128, you can use disks, you can use tapes, and now you can use uh, USB, you can use Wi-Fi, and yeah, I think it's just a, a wonderful enhancement for CPC. Okay, well thank you everyone for watching. And I'll see you next time.